Now we are ready to configure our wireless controller from the administration of the web GUI. Uh, here's where we'll spend most of our time in the day-to-day -day operation of our network wireless control. Uh, while the command line is still fully available, uh, a lot of the feature and functionality and the refreshed view uh, from the new Catalyst operating system is going to give us a lot of streamlined feature functionality, capabilities uh, across this new interface. Uh, so let's just spend some time getting familiar with what is available, kind of what is different, and how we go about configuring our solution here uh, for this new style Catalyst controller. So as we've logged in already with this environment, um, everything we've built up to this point from the wired settings, the wireless settings, the radio functionality, uh, has all really been at that day zero setup, both from the command line we've run through and the web GUI day zero configuration we've run through as well. Um, the status that we have right now was actually built off of our uh, command line uh, configuration uh, which will explain why that's important uh, in this design as we look at the access points a little more um, closely here. So from the first view, we have a, a nice refreshed modern dashboard uh, when you compare it to the uh, AeroS interface that exists as well. Um, so we can see we are in fact on the 9800L series wireless controller on the most current code of 1612.1 at this uh, recording. Uh, this interface looks and feels, if you've ever logged into a Catalyst network switch, uh, very much the same design, from the navigation menu bars on the left uh, to the very easy graphical interface you can see from the uh, dashboard and admin view uh, in the main center of the page here. Uh, across the top, we do have our quick hit icons here. Uh, we can you know, go back to the home screen. We can go here and do some wireless setup, which we'll cover in a little bit. Uh, we'll go through and save the configuration when we're ready for that. We can uh, understand how the dashboard is going to be presided to us when we want to go in for the amazing uh, preferences we have available here. We can opt in for different language sets. If we do load different language packs, we can run that here as well. Uh, if you hit the question mark, we do open up the uh, configuration, monitoring, management, uh, style for the actual config wizard of this interface. So if you have any configuration questions, where do I go, what to do, uh, the actual help guide will pop up in a separate uh, tab or window here, and you can go through without having to search Cisco or different config books. Uh, they do a good job of putting that configuration guide uh, right in front of you from the wizard here. We can also go through and just refresh the page. If something's changed, do you want to see something new? We can search the access points and clients, or in fact, we can go through and just log out if we're done with it. it. Even tells us that we are logged in as the admin user at this point here. So from the dashboard, we can see all of our wireless networks, the physical access points, of which we do have one plugged in right now and active. Uh, no clients, no rogues, no interference going on. Uh, the radios uh, are in a state of off, and we'll explain where that came from from this standpoint. Uh, we do get to see the overall uh, understanding of the appliance itself. You know, how is the CPU running? Uh, what are the cores doing? The memory utilization, how it's running from time to time. The longer it gets up, the more of a uh, timeline and trajectory you do see overall from the access controller. Uh, you can get into different advanced views if you wanted to go into a different view of monitoring. Uh, both CPU and memory can be loaded here as well if you want a deeper dive into the hardware of this controller. We then will see the access points uh, for our design here, what radio count, uh, the mode that they're running, and the join summary. And we can see access points that have joined. In this case, we are one enabled. And we could have seen the ones that have not joined. Maybe there's an error or the controller is looking for these access points. It sees them, but there's something permitting them from joining this controller. Uh, we can see their uh, information and some statistics about why uh, they have not joined, and we can make some uh, troubleshooting or remediation based on that. Once we have clients loaded, we can see device types of uh, trajectory of clients and trend lines there as well. Uh, and then we can overall see the system information here as well of how the controller is running uh, at a very quick glance. Uh, now this dashboard is something you can modify as well. Uh, the top row is going to be persistent. 
uh, but we can go through and uh, manage this as well. So if we say, hey, my access points is more important than my uh, CPU and memory, I will move them down and allow me to configure that. Or maybe not from this view. Uh, we'll cancel that for now. Uh, I can even drag them from this interface down here uh, and move it down as well. Um, so I can do it from that window uh, over here, customize dashboard icon on the uh, right, uh, which should allow you to do that. And you can swap positions there with the access points. That looks a little better. Uh, and we can move things up on top and just have a little bit of a degree of control uh, as we need to move our information up and around uh, across the board there. Uh, or again, like we showed, we can do a drag and drop uh, of our situation here, uh, put our access points front and center so I can see access point view, then system view, uh, maybe client device types are a little more important. Uh, and just for symmetry, I will throw uh, this up here as well. And we can save that and have that setting at our available. Again, just dashboard overview, things we can do and manage and monitor, uh, and just see what's most important to your environment of what's available from this guideline. From there, we'll hop to the monitoring. Uh, we'll notice that everything is going to be navigation from the left, and then a flyout uh, with a flyout here on the uh, right hand side of that navigation menu. Uh, we can just monitor our general system information, security services, and then wireless as well. Um, so we can see what we are discovering. In this case, we do have our switch upstream connected to this controller. It will properly label that switch, the port it's on, and information about it as well. Any clients running, the port statistics, the system view. Um, but I like to move down to AP statistics. Here we can see where the access points have uh, joined. In this case, we have this one that is on board right now in a very default state, does not even have a name associated other than its default uh, settings. Or we can see our join statistics over here. Uh, we can see that if an access point has joined or has not joined, uh, this statistics page will show that information here and help us troubleshoot if we click on the access point uh, information about it. We can see that it has joined, how many requests it received or were denied, any unsuccessful attempts, and we can see some information about the access point, and again, helping us understand why it joined, which is good in this case, without having to dig into the actual uh, console interface of the access point itself, or if something has not joined, we can take those steps to go in and see why it was not successful in reaching that access point. If we've satisfied all this information, we can actually clear that off um, across the board and we want to move that out of our statistic view or we even have the ability to export that view to Excel if you want to keep a uh, history or archive of that and then clear it off when we add it on board more access points. But the good thing is here we do have an access point that is joined and we look at the general page by clicking back on it uh, we get really a device 360 view giving us information about the access point right from this monitoring window. Again, we're not making configurations right now. We're just viewing what's going on with the access point. We can see the radio settings. We can see its state, is the LED on, the software version it's running based on the controller, uh, how long it's been running, when it joined the access control here, uh, the IP address of it. We'll notice we're on a 21 net uh, for our access points, which is different than our controller network. So we know that it's properly uh, functioning within our network trunk structure. Uh, we've not added any other specifications to the access point from a location, the name, a lot of things we can go in and tweak across the board. Understanding any statistics, quality of service, sensors, mesh, or trussec across the board, we can view on a per access point basis. Again, nice to have information in a very uh, easy to view, clean interface uh, style for everything that you have across the board. And again, we can export those data points to Excel as well. Under the wireless side, we can see anything more about the clients, the fabric, everything we saw from just a, a setting standpoint, uh, we can monitor across the board here. Again, easy to go in and view what's going on with our environment. Before we jump into the actual configuration of the radio, 
I just have to look at the actual controller by itself. Uh, here, we can go in and see how we're doing with best practices. Uh, by default, again, this is out of the box. I've done nothing really to our environment, nothing in the controller setting, and again, nothing to our just joined access point. And we already have a 19 out of 28 score based on our settings by default. We have a little bit of things to do when it comes to security, uh, anything dealing with our Apple devices. And the nice thing is we get to go and see uh, these settings and then how we can go and remedy them across the board uh, for what we need to do to get our best practice score up uh, where we need it to be. So we can take that uh, information and then go on and make some changes based on clicking the plus button next to any of these um, components and then it'll tell us what this functionality is actually doing why it's not on and takes us to both a learn more section which does give us another pop out from the system configuration book and we'll give us some information about why we can use these policies and what this actually does on a much more in-depth scale and then when we're ready to make a change upon that the button will be available whether it's an automatic configuration or a manual configuration to turn on or modify these features to get us into a higher best practice score and it'll take us right to that configuration window if need be this one here is also showing us with the dis the disabling of this functionality we can learn more and even gives us this fix now button, kind of the easy button to then automatically go in and fix this without having any manual parameters set to make that into a good status there. I'll leave them as defaults for now as we're just kind of viewing over this day zero configuration. We do have the ability to get into the command line. Uh, we've seen this with the catalyst switches, the 9300s, all those cat 9k generations to have the command line at the ready uh, from the GUI interface as well. So we can type in configurations like show run, run that command, and now we can see those uh, defaults right there without having to set up another console session or uh, locally connect into that box uh, to get that type of uh, view or configuration mode of our controller, which is very handy in going in those states. We can look at the device itself. Uh, we have gone back through and given it a proper name. Uh, we've given the management interface an IP address was part of our day zero configuration. That's just brought through here. Um, we can go through any FTP settings and uh, remote file transfer sorts. And redundancy, again, our day zero configuration from the GUI said we were running this in a standalone configuration. So it's going to be inherited by this design here as well. Uh, if we do want to run it into a redundant form, so I had two of these boxes, it walks you through a basic setup of what we want to do for the local IP address of the redundant configuration on both box one and box two. The nice thing is with these uh, smaller controllers, they do physically fit two controllers in a single rack unit space. Um, there is a specific rack mount shelf unit you can purchase to actually mount both of these appliances for full um, SSO redundancy in your network um, rack data center. So we'll leave that disabled for now. And off we go. This device does give us the ability to have local DHCP pools. If we're not joining a, a larger environment, something that might be good for a branch office, we wanna have something localized to that solution. Uh, we can add our DHCP pools specifically, go on. And again, everything here is very much a clean output configuration. Pop-out window exists, you type in your credentials, even gives you more advanced feature functionality as well to go and create your DHCP pools as needed. If we want to enable DNS functionality, we can do that here. We can point to umbrella. We can point to local servers. Again, depends on how you want to set up your credentials. So I'll do that here because it is something we have in our center uh, for availability. Once we type in one address, we hit the plus button. That'll bring it down into our uh, box down here to show us we do have the ability to run multiple addresses if that is the case of where you want to load your, DH, your DNS servers uh, for your solution. Once you've inputted all of your IP address into your setup, 
Both will be loaded down here. We'll apply to device, and now we have both of our DNS uh, servers properly labeled in our system uh, for correlation. Because we've set this device up in a day zero fashion, uh, right now we have it at a unlicensed state. Uh, this solution does take advantage of the smart licensing and smart account approach. And the nice thing is, it is very much a streamlined process. Um, so what it does, it walks you through how you're gonna reach out from this controller to the internet to have it talk to and communicate back to the smart account uh, service from Cisco. So in this case, it'll be a direct HTTP connection out to the internet. It's going to this website, so you want to make sure that you have um, all your firewall rules and administration available to reach that site, which should be open. It's a Cisco site. Um, where you want to have it go over specifically, uh, source interface or just open availability. Is it you know, a proxy server? And again, if you have a DNS server you want to specify here, you can put that in. Again, all setting up basic transport settings so you know you can reach the Cisco uh, smart licensing portal uh, for your credentials. So again, I'll type in our DNS server, just so we have that available. Once we've established that we can reach out to that connection, it'll then walk us through how we actually go in and load our smart licensing. Uh, it tells you step-by-step -step process to go in your smart account manager, load up the specific virtual account that you've tied your licenses into, move to that general tab, click generate new token, generate the token that you're going to apply for the solution, and then get ready to paste that token in here to allow that setting to now link this appliance to your smart account, and then all of the access point licensing you've purchased and tied with your access point purchases that are stored in your virtual account will now be applied to your controller. And once it's set up, it'll say authorized is in an authorized status, it is registered, and then every access point license that you want to apply into this environment will automatically be available for this controller. So as long as you have access points purchased, they have licenses that are tied to your system, the controller will then go and once linked, allow it to be um, provided with the amount of licenses you purchased to the amount of access points you do have in the smart account structure. In a management setting, we have all the backups, file management, logging, and SNP credentials that we do need. Uh, we can reload the appliance as well. We can set up our smart call home, uh, which is pretty easy, just having it enabled and making sure you can reach out to this Cisco service so you can talk to smart licensing and smart call home functionality. Software management gives us the ability here to load new operating system versions, so we have 12.x. Uh, right now, if a new version comes out, we can load that. We have maintenance updates we can load here as well. As well as any type of access point upgrades, uh, functionality for uh, service profiles, um, anything we need to do can be loaded here uh, across the board as well for your smart rolling credentials of your access point upgrade in management. We can set up our NTP services, making sure we have the right uh, service name in place and the right region as well. I have to go in and actually change the uh, location, date, and time to a different one here. We'll actually make it Eastern time. And we'll let that do its thing. All right, so once we have this set as our proper NTP server, our right source, we now can make sure that we are properly synced with our access points, our controllers, and the rest of our network. Once you do that, it does prompt a timeout, so you wanna let it run its course. We'll just log back in here. And then the last thing we can look at is the user administration as well. We can add multiple users, easy to add a new user, uh, what role do you want them to have, a lobby admin exists here as well, read only, no access, 
uh, anything you want to do to allow or disallow users into the environment, you can go through and set up that very quickly and easily from the admin uh, portal here, user administration setups. We also have the troubleshooting functionality to create logs, debugs, packet captures, a lot of great information we can pull out of the controller and use to test it against the network. Is it running? Packet captures, a lot of great details we can use, again, at your fingertips, very easily to run and navigate these settings across the board uh, from this much more modern interface. Last thing I'll show off here is the configuration window. Gone is the days of the AeroS configuration that had the default dashboard and then the advanced screen that led into many navigation uh, paths um, within windows and tabs and dialogues you can run into. And you have to be very savvy to run that controller configuration. And you still have to be savvy here as well to know why you're configuring certain elements of the controller. But this puts everything at your fingertips from one configuration screen. Uh, you won't be jumping back and forth from a, a navigation bar at the top and then a, a navigation bar on the left and trying to make sure you're in the right screen, in the right area, in the right section. Here, everything is going to be very much familiar from the traditional AeroS days of things we can do from the interfaces, the radio configurations, the security settings, all your wireless functionality, your buildup of your network. It's all there. How you go and do it is now just in this more um, modern view, modern flow, and it's easier to see where things are, how they're applied, and what they can do with this new controller. We'll take a look at those settings in a future video. Thank you.